back to our channel. My name is Amber. I'm the owner and founder of Brow Envy. We're a permanent makeup studio in Ohio and training academy. We offer in-person training and online classes. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my review of three of what I believe are the top machines for permanent makeup on the market right now. These are my three favorite after doing tons of research and using them. And I know a lot of artists are considering which machine to buy and they would like some feedback and a compare and contrast on the three machines. I don't believe a video like that exists, but I'm gonna give it to you today. So I'm gonna be showing you each one. I'm gonna be demonstrating them on practice skin and then giving you my pros and cons, hopefully to guide you on making the right purchase for you. This video is not sponsored by anyone. It's just something that I know so many artists need and I wanna share my feedback. So if that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and keep watching make sure you subscribe before you go do that now give me a like a thumbs up or a comment i would love to share more content with you guys and um, we'd love to have you join our youtube family so with that being said let's go ahead and jump in so as i mentioned i'm going to be comparing um, and contrasting and giving you guys my review on these three machines so i have um, the zion s which i purchased from microbo or fk irons they also make the Bilar, so i have that one as well and then the newest one is this rook Will. So I'm going to be sharing with you kind of my feedback on all of them. I have had the Zion S and the Bilar for much longer, over a year. And then the Rook Quill is something that I've purchased in the last few months for the purposes of reviewing and letting my students know what I think. Okay, so what are we going to be going over in this video? I want to tell you a little bit about the structure because it is going to be a little bit on the longer end and I want to make sure you understand what all you're getting and how important it is to watch the whole thing. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go over the price points for each so you understand which machines I'm talking about, how much each of them costs, and then I'm going to break them down one by one. I'm going to go over the pros and cons and what I like about them, and then um, at the end of the video, I'm going to demonstrate all three next to each other so you can hear the sound and see up close what they look like next to each other on practice skin with the same needle and ink just to show you kind of how they're performing what they sound like stuff like that and then at the very end I will give you my opinion overall on the ranking between the three of these one two and three just in my personal opinion and then I will also um, let you know kind of what I think each one might be better for or who might like one or the other um, so by the end of everything you'll have seen them all up close and personal and then you can make your own decision on which one would be best for you Okay, so let's talk about cost real quick. Um, each machine um, can be purchased by itself. The Zion and Bellar can be purchased as a package as well. So I'll go over both price points, and these are current as of March 2020. Of course, these prices could change, um, but we'll start with the most expensive one, the Bellar. This one is $12.99.95. I think it's been that price for as long as I can remember. Um, I will tell you that this machine and the Zion S, I do have a discount code for you for 10% off. I do not get anything from that, so I have no incentive to offer it other than that I love the machines. And I do have another video comparing these two if you wanna go watch it. It has really loud music, and that's one of the reasons I'm refilming this with the addition of a new machine. Um, I wanted to make sure I got into more detail and you guys could hear me better with this video. But at any rate, the people over at Microbo saw the video and wanted to share that discount code for my students and viewers on YouTube. So if you're interested in buying one of these two, you can use 10%, you can get 10% off your total purchase um, on microbow.com. I'll link that below. And the code is just brow and me. So anyway, this is $12.99.95 by itself. Um, you can also purchase the set, which is $14.99.95. And the set just comes with the power cord and the power supply, what you need to actually make the machine go. So if you buy it separately, the power supply that comes with these machines on Microbow is a critical atom, which I love. It is by itself $225.99. So if you buy it all at once, you're saving 25 bucks, if my math is correct, which I'm not a mathematician, I'm an artist. So, but I think it saves you $25. That said, if you have another power supply, then you don't have to buy the set or the power supply. You can use your own power supply. But $12.99.95 is the most expensive of the three machines. Well worth it, which I'll get into, but that's that. Um, the second, the middle priced one is gonna be your Zion S. This one is by itself $6.99.95. Um, with the power supply, again, it's $8.99.95. So if you get the whole thing to make it go, that's $8.99.95. If you already have a power supply or you wanna use a cheaper one, you can just go right on ahead and just pay the $6.99. Again, both of these, you can get 10% off if you use Brow and Bee, um, but that's the price point on those. And then the last one is the cheaper of the three. And one of the reasons I was really intrigued to try it um, which is it had good reviews and good feedback, but it's significantly cheaper. So the Rook Quill 
is normally $4.50. I think I bought mine for $4.50, but for whatever reason, they're on sale as of March 2020 right now. So I bought mine from Hive Beauty, great company, great customer service, by the way. Um, and currently it's $4.10.31. So $410.31. I wonder if there is some kind of special sale for that to be the price. Um, I looked elsewhere and I found it for about 400 bucks as well. So it looks like it's just on sale in a lot of places, but somewhere in the 400 to $450 range. Um, so you can see it's a lot cheaper than the other two. Um, it does not come as a set that I could find. So you would need to purchase a power supply. It comes with a cord, but you're gonna need something to plug it into to make it go. So if you already have one, you can use that. You can use the critical atom power supply I mentioned, which is $225. I love that power supply. There are cheaper ones. I just haven't found any cheaper ones that I like. So I will link that power supply down below, but there's your price points. Individually, let's just talk machines. You are $12.99 for the Bellar. You are $6.99 for the Zion S and somewhere between $400 and $450, depending on your source for the Rook coil. Okay guys, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out each machine and compare them individually with my pros and cons on some important topics and then what I think the machines are great for, maybe kind of what some of the downsides are with each machine um, before we go into the comparing of all three at the same time. So the first machine I'm gonna go over is the Bellar. This is the one from Microbo, and this is the most expensive of the three. Um, I will first turn it on and let's see if you guys can hear how quiet it is. So it's very light, um, very skinny, probably about the skinniest of the three. Um, it feels like holding a marker in your hand. I'm gonna bring the machine a little closer to make sure you guys can hear how quiet it is. So this is about how big it is, similar to like a, a thicker, like a bigger permanent marker. Super, super light. Um, I think that this machine is great for precision. So people who are doing eyeliner, lips, of course brows, and um, machine hair strokes. I don't do those, but I feel like um, of all of them, when I practice with it, it is the most precise of all three of the machines in that way. Um, so let's see, the topics I wanna cover, size and weight, super light, super skinny, like literally holding a pen. So if your primary focus is size and weight, of the three, I'd probably pick this one. Um, I do feel like people with any size hand can use any of them. I'm speaking from the perspective of being heavy handed. I find that using a really light machine makes me a little more heavy handed in my work. Um, I like holding weight. Uh, having a little bit of a weighted machine um, helps me prevent myself from being too heavy handed. That's just my personal feedback, but I have also talked to other people who feel the same way. Um, but if you're someone who maybe needs more power, maybe you're naturally more light-handed, I actually think that the Bolar would be great for you um, because I feel like it's very powerful. It's super strong. So for someone who's really light-handed, I think it would work wonderfully, especially people who, again, have problems, maybe are worried about holding something larger. This would be a great option for you. I will say that it is extremely powerful. So what I mean is it, it just feels like when this machine operates at the same speed, as the other two, um, it is gonna just fly off the table, the tray. Like it is so powerful. So when I do powder brows with the Bellar, I turn my speed on the same power supply that I use the other machines on. I, I turn this one way down. So I might even be like five, you know, or there are sometimes when I'm working on really tiny pixels that I'll be on 4.8 um, on the power supply. And again, if you're not familiar, this is the critical um, Atom X power supply that I was talking about. Um, but anyway, it has to be really low and I don't know if that's true for everyone It's just been my personal experience in that this machine is like so strong um, And it operates at a it just feels like it turns over faster So that being said that's kind of my feedback on the size and the weight <clears throat> from a design perspective I think it's genius. It does have this nice grip um, I love the shape of the grip it feel it fits really easily in your hand. It has a nice strong power supply or power cord um, it goes in and it stays in. I've never broken this. It's not showing any signs of weakness. Um, so this is really well made overall, the machine and everything. I just think it's a, it's a great design. So I have no complaints as far as that goes. The noise is super quiet. Um, I think that most clients who are nervous about machine work are pleasantly surprised that it is not like a super loud chainsaw sound. So if you have clients that might be worried about that, you'd be in great shape with this machine. 
Um, power and consistency, we talked about power a little bit, but from a consistency standpoint, it is extremely consistent. So when the machine is set, it is going to run at that depth and at that speed without fail. It is so, um, it's flawless, honestly. Like I never have a time where I'm like, oh, I feel like it jumped or gosh, why can't I get the results that I want? I have always been able to control it. Every machine you get, you're gonna need to learn it, right? And figure out the speed that works for you. And every skin type is different. That's a technique thing. But from a machine perspective, it really doesn't get better than this as far as consistency goes. Um, so I'm gonna do a comparison at the end um, as far as my overall ranking. But in general, this machine really is top notch. So if you have the money and you really wanna get something that can do everything and cost is not an issue, then this would be a fantastic machine to get. Um, Microbow overall, I've been just really impressed with the company, their customer service. The machines are like flawless. Like when they come, they're, they're just so perfect. Um, they look just so well made. They feel good in your hand. You ever bought something and you're just like, this is nice. Like this just feels good or sometimes you try a different brand. I've done that with like lights for the studio or um, stools. You just, you can tell when something's really, really well made, that's definitely this machine for sure. Okay, next up, I'm gonna give you my feedback on the Microbo um, Zion S. This is a super popular machine. Um, I think it's been around for a couple years. I bought mine a little over a year ago and it is a workhorse. We use it for everything. So, so before I jump into like my thoughts on it, I wanna turn it on and let you guys hear the sound. Um, and I will bring it closer so you can see the size and the shape in my hand. But this is how quiet it is. Super quiet, maybe slightly louder than the Velar, but still nice and quiet, not scary. So I'm gonna come a little bit closer and let you guys see it up close. All right, so here is the Zion S while it's on. None of these have cartridges in them yet, um, but that doesn't affect the sound. So here's the Zion S in my hand. You can hear how quiet it is. And then you'll notice it does have a thicker grip. They do make other grips for this, but this is the standard one. So that said, let's see, I'm not a lefty, but let's see if I can show you. Even in your hand, it's still like a thicker permanent marker. It is a little on the heavier side compared to the Bilar but still nice and light. It definitely doesn't feel like you're holding a tattoo machine. Okay, so now you've seen the Zion S up close and personal and heard it. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the size and weight. It is about the size of a permanent marker, uh, probably like the biggest permanent marker they make, maybe a little bit bigger. So by comparison to the other two machines, definitely a little bit on the thicker, heavier side, but it's still a light machine. It's just really well made. feels like good metal in your hand. Um, I do have bigger hands than the average woman, nothing crazy, but bigger. And I have no problem holding it. It feels like I said, holding like a thick, thick marker, like a bigger paintbrush. Um, they do make disposable grips, which is nice. So for this machine in particular, if you live in an area where disposable, disposable grips are required, this is a no brainer, you're gonna get this one. Um, to my knowledge, the other two don't have disposable grips. So if that is a base level requirement, you're gonna need this baby. Um, the disposable grips mean that this piece just comes completely off, you pop the disposable grip on and you throw it away after every client. So if that's required of you, then you're gonna wanna that, uh, get that one. Um, but that being said, it is still very manageable. I have um, a couple artists who have really small hands and they produce beautiful work with this and they love it. In fact, by comparison, when they've tried the other two machines, they would still prefer the Zion S, even with little hands. So if you have small hands and you're mostly worried about that, I would not let that be the strongest factor in choosing. Like it can be a factor if you're torn, but I definitely wouldn't let that drive your decision because like I said, I've dealt with people um, of all different hand sizes and everybody seems to agree with me that it's really a personal preference thing. None of these are gonna prevent you from working um, based on your hand size. Um, I will say I strongly recommend this machine for someone who has a heavy hand because I do feel like having this weight in your hand helps you balance um, how much pressure you distribute into the skin. And I find it so easy to be light and airy um, with this machine over a smaller one. So there's that to consider as well. Um, but again, size and weight is still super good here. Um, the design and shape. I think the design is flawless. It has a nice shape. Like I said, it is a little bit thicker where it doesn't necessarily seem like it has to be, like your grip down here, um, but this top part seems like it could be thinner. 
Um, but that being said, it doesn't affect anything. And um, in our studios, we produce great results with this, as do people all over the world. So no complaints, honestly, there. Um, the noise is really quiet. You heard that. It's a little bit louder than the Velar, but I mean, whisper quiet, so, so quiet. So that is nice for your clients. Um, power and consistency, it is incredible. I think where this one wins is it has the ability, I, I feel like I have so much control. On the inside, you can adjust um, how hard your machine is hitting. So you can make it softer and more gentle, more smooth, and I feel like you can also make it much harder if you prefer it. So that's something that you get to play with that the other machines don't have. I know the Bellar doesn't have that, and I don't believe the Rook has that ability either. <clears throat> so I love that. Each of artists in our studios adjusts to their own liking. So we all like it a little bit different. That part is really nice. I feel like adjusting the speed on this one, you can create so many different looks. Like I can take the speed way low in almost see every single pixel that I want. And I can turn it up much higher if I want to be more aggressive, depending on the technique. Um, my husband does scalp micropigmentation and he needs to turn the speeds way up. So he has, is able to do that with this machine as well. It's really universal, so if you do, Honestly, even body art tattoos, I'm pretty sure you could do that with this. Like, there's almost nothing you can't do with a Zion S. So, for that reason, I just think it's a winner in terms of universal use. Um, and then again, like I said, power and consistency, it's unmatched. Like, it's so good. Um, so, that's my kind of opinion here. Remember, this is the mid priced one. So, if price is a concern and you were comparing it to the Bellar, you're gonna save money here and still get pretty much all the same stuff. So there's that. Third one that I have to turn on to show you before I demonstrate on practice skin is the Rook Quill. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. It is plugged up now. Super quiet. Um, probably the quietest of the three. I'm gonna bring it a little closer so you guys can see it up close and hear it up close. All right, so here is the Rook Quill up close. So you can hear it's so quiet. And then I wanna show you in my hand what it kinda of looks like. So, starting off with noise. This one is whisper quiet, they all are. Um, but again, super quiet and gentle, not aggravating. The vibrations aren't super crazy. It's not gonna aggravate your hand or annoy you or your client. Um, from a size and weight perspective, it is a nice middle ground. It's um, not too skinny and light that you feel like, you know, you can't hold on to it. Like it's got a nice, good quality size uh, and weight to it. It's got a good grip. It's not too big. It's not too skinny. So I do like um, the width or I guess the diameter of the whole machine is relatively short. So it just kind of feels like there's no wasted space here. Like it is um, completely practical and I like the size and weight here. Um, also the design. The only comment that I will make on the design, and I think it's a, it's a relatively big thing to consider, is the power cord. I'm not a big fan of it. So I do know that you can buy replacements, but I think they are all pretty similar. But I do wanna show you, this is a little skinny. Um, and it's not so much the skinniness as it is how flimsy and easy it is to kind of wrap up. So it easily tangles and that part I don't love. Um, the other part that I don't love about this machine is that it has a magnetic power supply, right? So what that means is it doesn't plug in, the magnet just connects, right? So I'll show you that again. And in theory, that's kind of cool. Um, I don't know the reason for that design, it's kind of neat, um, but the only problem is if you're someone who has your setup around you, um, the cords are really long, right? So it's got to, for me, my plugs are always in the wall behind me. And so sometimes what happens is this is all protected, right, with cord covers, but the end of the cord that's going into my power supply, I step on it sometimes, or sometimes my stool rolls over it. If you use machines, you've been there a million times, right? So what happens is it easily falls out. Like I barely tugged on that. Um, and so at least two to three times every session I use it, I pull it out. So now I know that about it and I've made some adjustments. So I don't think that's a reason not to purchase it, but um, it is kind of a con to me. And I don't know a solution because I'm pretty sure there's no way to exchange this to where you can plug a cord in. So that's probably my only comment about the design and really like the only thing that I don't love about it. So let's talk about power and consistency. It is super powerful. Um, equally powerful to the other machines, so you're not losing anything there. Remember, this is the cheaper of the three by a lot. Um, 
It is consistent and a super great machine. Um, I will tell you more at the end of this video when we do our comparison together, um, but I don't know that it's as consistent as the other ones. I do sometimes feel like um, they're not as, the, the pixels are not as smooth. And I do a lot of pixelated work. I should qualify everything by that. I'm really looking for like soft results, um, not a lot of super heavy dense results. I do feel like if you turn this machine up and you're working in a style where you want something more dense and heavy, um, this would be fantastic at that, maybe even better than the other two. So really, really is consistent. I just don't feel like it's necessarily as smooth. Okay, so I have individually showed you each of these, let you see the size up close. Now I'm gonna do some comparing. So I'm actually gonna bring the camera closer so that you can see them next to each other, hear them next to each other, look at the size and how they look in my hand. And we're gonna get some practice skin out and we're gonna get some ink and we're gonna show you guys some results on practice skin so we can do some comparison that way. Okay guys, so now that we have compared them individually, I'm gonna show you the three of the machines next to each other and then do some comparing on practice skin. So here's all three of them. We have the Bilar, the Rook Quill, and the Zion. Um, again, this is the most expensive. This is your middle of the road price. And then this is the cheaper um, price wise of the three. So first of all, let's kind of look at the size. From a length perspective, the Bilar is definitely the longest and Zion and Rook Quill are about the same as far as length. From a thickness perspective, the Zion is going to be the thickest around. Um, so again, this area is where the cartridge is gonna go. So here's where you're gripping it. So this one is definitely gonna be the thickest. I can kind of show you from this angle as well, but they're not that different. Like we're not, you're not making life or death decisions here. They're not that, you know, unique and different in that way. Um, and then you can see each of them have their power supply cords. So remember these plug in, these are super secure. This one's the one that's a little looser because it's got that magnetic um, insert and then a little bit of a thinner cord. Um, weight wise, actually let's here, let's show you them in my hand. So I'll put them kind of, so you have something to compare them to. Here's kind of what they look like in my hand. Weight wise, um, the Bilar and Rook Quill are really close, but I think that the Rook is significantly lighter than the three of them. Like these are close, but this one's all um, a little lighter than the Bilar and a lot lighter than the Zion. So if you were looking at weight, this is the lightest. This is gonna be in the middle. And then this is the heaviest, right? So that is kind of how that goes. Let's go ahead and have a look at them on practice skin. Okay, I'm gonna start with the Rook Quill. So all of them, I'm using the same quadrant um, cartridge. You just kind of push it in and twist. Okay, and let's turn it on. So that's what it sounds like with the cartridge in. Super quiet. Now I'm gonna kind of load up this cartridge and show you guys what it looks like in practice skin. Um, most of them, actually all of them, to adjust the length of your needle, you just kind of twist. So I'm gonna shorten that a little bit. And then let's go ahead and load up our cartridge. These are my favorite cartridges, these Quadrant uh, brand. So with all of them, you're gonna to wanna to let that cartridge sit in the ink for a minute to soak up or suck up all the ink that you can get. Okay, let's do a couple kind of pixel strokes. Now this is practice skin, so I will say a lot of practice skins, you just don't really know how consistent they're gonna be. It's not like real skin. So it sounds a little bit louder than what it's gonna sound like on a person, um, because you gotta be a little more aggressive on practice skin than you do on people sometimes, so don't let that noise deter you. Cool, so there's that. Let's wipe this off and see if we can see. That's gonna be pretty light, so I'm gonna do another pass to show you guys. So that's a little light. We're gonna do another pass just to make sure you guys can see on the camera. Again, I'm going a little heavier here just because I want you to see, but you're gonna be really light if you're doing shading, obviously, on skin. Honestly, all three are such great machines. We're not gonna see too much difference between them, but I wanna show you anyway. Okay, so that one was the Rook. And then we're gonna try the Bellar. 
Here's the Bilar all ready to go. Again, you twist left to right to change your needle hang. Now this one is on the same setting, and I don't know if you can hear it the same way I can feel, but keeping it on the same speed, it is definitely depositing way more dots than the Rook. So remember where I said it's so powerful, I honestly turn it down compared to the other machines in terms of speed. For demonstration purposes, I'm showing you all of these on the same speed, but normally I would turn that down. So you can already see this is two passes with the Rook. This is one pass with the Bellar. How many more pixels were deposited at the exact same speed? So that could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what your goals are. Um, but that can easily be adjusted by turning it down. It is definitely just more powerful um, and more efficient, I will say that. I'm gonna turn the speed down a little bit. And then let's have a look at that. So you can see when I turn the speed down some that the pixels got a little bit lighter, but just super powerful, really, really consistent. But those pixels from the Rook are so pretty. I love that. So there's the Bellar. Then next we're gonna do the Zion. So here is the Zion running and with the cartridge in it. So same cartridge, I'm using the same cartridge on all three of these. And then this is similar to the other two to adjust how far out your needle is hanging. You're just gonna twist it up left or right to make it shorter or longer. Okay, I'm gonna get a little more ink because I believe we're running low. So super quiet, but I think you can hear, maybe this doesn't translate on video, I don't know. But it is a little louder than the other two, but still super quiet. Um, right away, my first instinct just holding this one next to the other two is just how smooth and even and like not aggressive it feels. It's just very gentle in the hand. And I love that about this machine. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the same exercise here with the Zion. Just right away, I love how this machine feels. It's so smooth, consistent, like super powerful, but you just don't feel hardly any vibration. And I feel like that helps me keep my hand really steady. Be great for all procedures, but especially those like de um, detailed ones, or I just love it for pixelated powder. So let's wipe that off. I'm gonna bring the practice skin a little closer to you. Let's see if you guys can see these little pixels here. So the top one is the Rook. The middle is the Bellar, the bottom is the Zion. What I love about the Rook is how the you get these like super subtle pixels. Um, of course, adjusting the speed is gonna change all these results. So be mindful of that, like your technique matters. But you can see at the same speed how strong the Bellar is. So you have to turn it down if you're gonna use that machine um, and you wanna maintain a little more control, but it definitely covers more ground faster than the other three. And then you can just see the Zion um, in one pass gets a little bit more dots uh, closer together. But from a consistency standpoint, I definitely say the Rook looks like it has the most even pixels. So all three good results, kind of just different in their own way. Okay guys, so now the time has come for me to tell you which of these machines I recommend or like what my ranking is, I guess. So the first thing I wanna say is all three machines are fantastic. I have all three, we use all three. So that should tell you that I love them all. Um, I think that price point is going to drive a lot of customers toward the machine that they end up choosing because they all do a great job. So if we ranked these in terms of price, your Bellar is the most expensive, Zion's in the middle, and the Rook is on the cheaper side. So if you are really, really price conscious right now, um, depending on where you are um, in life at the moment, you might wanna go for the Rook Quill because it is on the cheaper end and still produces great results, even though there are a couple cons and a couple areas where I feel like the Zion and the Bellar are better. I definitely feel like the Zion and Bellar just feel a little heavier, like not in a bad way, like weight, but like just quality. When you pick them up, you just feel like they're expensive. And I'm not saying that the Rook is cheap. I just feel like it doesn't have that same kind of weight. Um, but that being said, it is cheaper. If it does need to be repaired at some point, or if you ended up replacing it sooner than these two, you saved a lot of money on the purchase. So it's not a bad purchase at all for that reason. Um, I think that all three are fine to, 
don't worry about your hand size. I see a lot of comments about weight. None of them are heavy or overly, you know, intrusive. It's not gonna interfere with your work. But if you are really worried about weight, you're gonna wanna go for the Bilar or the Rook because they are so light, it's like holding a pen, right? Um, if you really, really need a disposable grip, you gotta go for the Zion, right? Because it has disposable grips. So if that's required, you almost don't have a choice. Um, if you're looking for precise results, they are all outstanding. If you're looking for machines that can do almost anything, they probably all can. Um, in fact, I've seen videos of people doing every type of body art possible with all three, so you're in good shape there. If you are really concerned with precision work, and um, if you're really, really wanting to do machine strokes, I, I think that the Bilar is probably better suited for all of that. So eyeliner, really delicate movement. Um, if you had to pick, I would lean this way. Um, that being said, my personal favorite machine, if I could only use one and only ever have one forever and ever and ever for all my services, it would be Zion. Um, I just think, absent everything else, if you take out price, um, anything else, literally just everything about it outweighs the others. It is just precise. Powerful, consistent, fits good in your hand. The, the biggest thing, the reason that I love this one the most is I love the ability to adjust it, making it hit softer or harder. And I also love how consistent it feels. I don't really feel any vibration when I hold it. I know something is on, but um, there are moments where I pick it up and I, can't, I have to take a second to figure out if it's even on at all. Not just because of how quiet it is, but just how smooth it is. Like I barely feel like it's moving. And so for consistency, precision, just making sure everything is even. And you guys know if you do pixelated work, um, powder brows especially, and lips, like you need smooth movement to get them to blend. And this is the queen machine for that. Um, the other two are fantastic, and you even saw in the practice skin work, like the Rook makes these beautiful pixels. It's consistent, right? And the Bellar is super powerful. I just feel like it's a little bit too strong, and this one might be a little too gentle, and this one's right in the middle with the ability to make significant adjustments, and I think at the end of the day, the ability to tweak so much about it, in addition to speed and hand movement, make this the best machine literally ever made. You can't convince me otherwise, right? Until another machine comes out and then I'll review it for you guys but again all of them are fantastic I think this one just crosses every box on the list it's middle of the road price well made it's got a great warranty so anyway if I could pick one I'd pick this one but if I could pick any I'd have all of them which is why I do, because I love them all. So hopefully this video was really helpful and it answered some of your questions and you got to see up close and personal the three compared to each other. I would be super happy to answer your questions in the comments below. Um, thoughts, comments, concerns, even if you disagree with me, I would love to hear why and I think other watchers or viewers would as well so they can get other feedback. So please leave your feedback there. If you have any questions, let me know. Don't go without liking and subscribing. I would really love the support to make more videos just like this for you guys. And I'd love to hear if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover or compare. I also don't want to go without mentioning um, that we do have online training classes and our super awesome community of artists in our membership called the Alliance. You can learn all about it, but it's a monthly membership program for me to be your mentor and coach and provide tons of online training, including um, over 10 online classes. We do weekly live training videos in classes, so downloads, things that you can keep forever every single week. And then we have a private Facebook community just for our members where I can personally coach and provide guidance to you on your business and your techniques. So if that sounds interesting to you, check us out at www.pmucoach.com or send me a message and I will share all the details with you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in our next video.